Hey, Sean here, and in this video, we're gonna go over seven ways to stop spam on your website. Now, nobody likes spam, but unfortunately, if you have a website, you're prone to getting a lot more of it than the typical email user. And on top of that, 48% of all emails are spam. And the biggest culprit of all is us in America. We send more spam than any other country. So that's why I decided to put together this video to help you with these seven tips on how to stop spam from your website and you can apply these right after you're watching this video. All right, let's dive into those seven ways to stop spam on your website, starting with number one, which is to keep your domain private. Now, what does that mean? When you register your domain for your website, the www.yourname.com, that you can either register it as private or you can leave it as public. If you left it as public and didn't pay extra to get it registered as private, then anyone can see your email address because it's public record who owns that website or domain name. And along with that information goes your email address. So spammers can go out there and typically for free, download this information and get your email address and start spamming you. So what I would suggest is either going out there to wherever you registered your domain name and making sure you register it privately. That way that information stays private or changing your email address to one that you don't mind that people send spam to. All right, with that, let's move on to way number two, which is to use CAPTCHA on your website forms. Now, if you're not sure what a CAPTCHA is, it's basically just a challenge question that makes sure you're actually a human filling out a form. Now, how this prevents spam is that a lot of spam um, is really actually generated from programs or what a lot of people call as bots. And these go out and they seek out people's websites and they find forms on them and they fill out the forms and send the spam through the form. Now how you can prevent that or sort of stop a lot of that is by having these challenge questions that only a human would ever would be able to basically answer and then you can basically stop a lot of that unnecessary form filling out and spam coming to you. So there are a number of ways to implement this. There's uh, Google has their own sort of CAPTCHA code that you can put on your forms and there's a number of other ways that you can create uh, challenge questions and put those on your forms. So I suggest doing that if you don't already have something like that in place. With that, let's move on to our way number three, which is to use a honeypot. Now, you're probably not quite sure what a honeypot is, and let me explain. So when somebody fills out your form on your website, they see the fields that are visible there and they fill them out. With the honeypot, you make one of those fields on that form invisible to people that are viewing the actual web page, but the form, that field in that form is still there in the code. So when one of those bots that we were talking about, those programs that come and find websites and try to fill out their forms, they can't see what we see, they only see the code. So what they see is a form field that needs to be filled out. So they fill it out and submit the form. Now on your end, when you're processing the data that's submitted through that form, you know that that form field should be left blank because nobody should be able to see it. So if there's data filled in on that form field, you know it had to have come from one of these robots or uh, programs out there that filled out a form on your site and submitted it. So therefore you can just block that entry and just disregard or ignore that information that came through, thus stopping whatever spam they were trying to send you in the first place. All right, with that one, that's a good one. Let's move on to number four, which is to prevent email harvesting. Now, what's email harvesting? Email harvesting is these bots, these 
programs that go out and they seek out people's websites and they look for email addresses that are on the web page and then they copy down the email and then later on send that email spam what you can do is prevent that by either one not listing your email address on your web pages therefore they have nothing to harvest or you can do an alternative to that whereas you list it but just do it in a way that only humans can see it. For example, use your email address in an image. These bots or programs can't typically read images. They can only read text. So therefore, they don't see the email address, but humans still see it. Another way is to use code to sort of um, encrypt the email so that you, when you look at the code, all you see is an encrypted a uh, bunch of string of numbers and letters, but when you look at it in an internet browser, it actually displays as an email address. So therefore, you can kind of prevent a lot of these bots from again harvesting your email. All right, with that one, we're ready to move on to the next one, number five, which is to use Askame or a similar service to that. So Askame, what is that? It's basically a service that you can sign up for for your website that will prevent spam comments and uh, spam from being filled out in your form. What they do is they maintain a list of uh, bad actors or people or with their IP addresses or locations or just other signals that they've seen that trigger the that they know are people that are basically either bot sending spam through your thing or someone else who's a spammer going to people's sites and spamming. So they can then block them from being able to submit your form at all. They also look at the content of what was submitted through the form. And a lot of times when spam is submitted through a form, as you're probably sure you're aware of, it has um, sometimes a bunch of gibberish, um, a bunch of links in it, or things like that, and they can basically see this and filter those messages out. They're usually pretty good. They usually don't have too many false positives, so you can usually put this up and it works pretty well. And there are a number of other services out there that'll do the same thing besides the company that I just mentioned. All right, so with that, let's move on to our next way, which is number six, which is to block bad countries. Now, unfortunately, there are a number of countries that tend to have bad actors in them and they're sending out spam. So what you can do is if your website should only typically have, uh, you know, travel uh, traffic from the US or a certain specific countries is you can block all the other countries from being able to view your website except for those countries that people should be viewing your website from. This can help prevent these bad actors from those other countries going to your website in the first place so therefore you don't get spam from them. All right, with that one, we're ready to move on to our very last one, number seven, which is to disallow bots. Now, again, I was talking about bots, which are those programs that come to websites and seek out uh, harvesting their emails or filling out the forms. So what you can do is also add some code onto your website that stops them from being able to load your website in the first place. This is a great way to sort of prevent them from doing anything in the first place, but it's not foolproof. Some bots can get around this by pretending or faking that they're not a bot. So it doesn't necessarily guarantee that bots won't be able to see your site, but you can at least cut back on a couple of them. Well, there you go. I hope that helps you. And in fact, I wanna leave you with something for free. If you look in the description of this video, there's gonna be a link to a free analysis. If you fill that out, we can take a look at your website and see if some of these or all of these or other options might be good for you if you're having trouble with email and getting spam. All right, so with that, if you're on YouTube watching this, make sure you click to give us the thumbs up that you like this video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, make sure you do and click the bell icon, which will let you get notified every time we put out one of these awesome videos. And until then, good luck with your website and your email.